congratulations. Why, why did this job appeal to you? I, I think there's lots of things. I think ultimately it's a club that's been on the rise for a good few years now. And there's been a lot of good work, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch with obviously the guys next to me and, and the board. Um, the obvious ones is obviously what's gone on on the pitch. You know, the success that the club have had with two promotions in the last four years and um, some of the cup runs that have been on. From an outside looking in, it's been very noticeable. Um, so to have an opportunity to join a club that certainly look and seem to be doing the right things was, uh, was very appealing. It's a big decision for you to leave West Brom after only a month mm. um, in that under-23s job. So that shows how much you wanted this one. Yeah, pretty much. Um, although, you know, there was a uh, an understanding, let's say, obviously, with um, my previous employers. Obviously, I've spent a lot of time at that football club and had two short spells recently. But previous to that, I pretty much spent 10 years of my career there as a, as a player and a coach. Um, so I've still got a, a lot of people, that I think, very, very highly of. And, you know, I do thank them for obviously giving me the, the chance to, to come and manage Lincoln because um, they were able to facilit facilitate uh, the opportunities I got to do the 23s during the summer and obviously I find myself now with a great opportunity to get back into management. Big shoes to follow, isn't it? The Cowley brothers after what they've achieved here. I mean, two promotions in three seasons. Mm. Um, <laughs> how do you see that? Yeah, I mean, you can look at two ways, can't you? I mean, obviously... A lot of people tend to get a management job on the back of, you know, a manager not doing particularly well or perceived to be doing particularly well. Um, you know, I find myself in a position where, like you say, not one manager, I suppose two managers have been being brothers, and um, they've had a great spell here. I think, um, I think Danny and Nick will be the first to admit that the football club, because of the, the rise it's had in such a short space of time. Um, League One's a different different ball game altogether. Um, there is a, a, a gap and a gulf between League Two and League One, um, and I suppose um, it's my chance now, an opportunity to one first make sure that we stabilise at this level and, and, and be competitive at this level uh, before being able to kick on and hopefully uh, do what most of the clubs in this division are, are striving to do is to get into the championship. So that's immediate goal is stay in this division, longer term, get into the championship? Absolutely, I've signed a three and a half year deal and by the end of the three and a half year deal, uh, hopefully with the backing of the board and continue backing that they have done over the last few years to be able to achieve that. You're so well thought of in football generally um, and you've had so many different roles, but this is your fifth job as a number one, by my reckoning. Mm. With that in mind, is this make or break for your career as a number one, do you think? Uh, I hope not. I hope not, because I've only been sat once. So you work it out. I must be doing something right. Um, so, you know. But it is a big step to take that step and put yourself on the front line, isn't it? Because you've been a, such a successful number two and, and working about, uh, else, elsewhere in, yeah. within football clubs. Absolutely, but I think you've got to take challenges and, you know, ultimately uh, this is going to be a challenge for me, there's no doubt about it. You know, we find ourselves, you know, Regardless of the success, you know, in recent seasons, you know, we've won one game in nine, you know, that, so the stats don't don't lie, you know, and even before Dan and Nick left, you know, I think it was something like four out of five or five out of six games lost. So I'm under no illusions about how difficult the task is going to be, but um, I like a challenge, as you know, um, and you know, again, uh, the clubs we can we can go through them now, you know, it's one of them where. From Portsmouth's point of view, for as much as it was tough for 12 months, it was very enjoyable. And, um, you know, we, we come ever so close with a, we're under a difficult situation to nearly doing the great escape in the first year. Um, and then, obviously, a lot of people will talk about my moves to Blackpool and Blackburn, and I get that, I understand that. Um, but my response a lot of the time to that is it was six years ago, maybe seven years ago and uh, I've had three years at Oxford and a year at Leicester in between, and I didn't do too bad, to be fair. Very well there. But do you think you're a different person? From I think so. Year? I think so, yeah. Way? Well, I was, I was very hungry to get to the top very quickly, um, and, you know, that hunger and drive and determination, even though it hasn't left, I think what I have done is a little bit wiser, take my time, um, weigh up the options, um, you know, ultimately, before going into West Brom, like you say, like six, seven, eight weeks ago, there has been opportunities, and I think it's been 
widely <laughs> reported. There's been a couple of opportunities that I could have took. Um, and I'd like to think, you know, six years on, um, I've made them for the right decisions. And you know, maybe six years ago, I would have, probably would have took one of them. You watched the team for the first time, I think, here on, on the weekend. No second thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, what it did, it gave me clarity. If anything, give me clarity of obviously the job in hand. Like I say, you know, we're, when a club has been so successful and they've had two people as they had done with Dan and Nick, um, we find ourselves in a position probably as a group um, where they've not been in this position for three or four years, you know, where, you know, it's a difficult time, the results haven't been coming. Um, it's a, a league that's not as forgiving and, oh, sorry, yeah, not as forgiving as the League Two, you know. So there's things that will happen in this league that we, you know we will we'll get punished for. Um, so that's why I said, you know, from from a stability point of view, it's important that we make sure that we're, we're, we're competitive in this league, um, get a feel for it, know what it's about, and then ultimately, you know, really have a good challenge here. Quick call to Liam, if that's right before I hand, hand it over to everybody else, Liam. I, I want you to try and point his perspective how tough it's been because the Cardinals have, have done such a job here and there's been such a momentum. Um, in the league and in cup competitions as well, and, and a really feel good factor. You're a victim of your own success for them moving on, I suppose. But how difficult, from a club's point of view, when they've got a legacy like that, to start again and start a new legacy? Yeah, sure. I think we recognise the challenge that, that this time you know presents itself. But what we have been doing over the last three years, whilst Dan and Nick have been at the football club, is making sure the infrastructure behind the scenes has been you know updated and, and upgraded it in line with the challenge that we face. So you know we don't feel like this is a reset. Far far from it. I think what we what we do recognise is that we're looking for someone like Michael that's got real clarity of thought and mind and, and can captain that ship and, and and take us forward. But I think what we've done behind the scenes is make sure this football club's got. Uh, a lot of infrastructure in, in place for, for short, medium and long term success. So, you know, we recognise the challenge, we're, we're, we're very respectful to that. Um, and, and obviously, you know, you, you have to look at the result on Saturday and, and see how, you know, how tough this league is going to be. Um, but it's everything like that. You know, we, we find these as just great opportunities to learn um, as a football club and, and continually strive for, for, you know, for getting to the next step and, and getting better each day. It's been a lot of affection for this football club from the public outside of Lincoln, never mind, you know, within the city itself. Um, because of what, what what's happened and the way it's conducted itself. What is it about Michael that made you think he, he's the right man to, to continue that? Well, I think first of all, it started with the on-field credentials, and and you know, first of all, you know, you clearly from you know, you, you don't get to coach at the level Michael's coached it without adding value every single day on the training field. And first and foremost, you know, we felt that that's what the squad here here needed. But second of all, you look at the job that, that Michael's done outside of, of the, you know, outside of the green rectangle and, and the business side of football clubs, the growing attendances, the connection with the community, and all of that, which we feel is just equally as important to to ourselves as a football club right now. So I think from from the moment that we met Michael, we we quite quickly. Became our, our number one target, and, and we recognised that that it wasn't just the on-field job that he was, you know, going to be set up to do here. It was the it was the off-field and everything that goes with it. He's, he's a very different sort of profile, I think, to when you took the, the, the Cowleys on here. Um, in fairness, Michael's so well thought of within within football. His contact book is well. I'd like to get a look at it if he ever handed it across to me to be fair, because he knows everybody in the game, and he's worked at so many clubs at, at very high levels. So. What value can Lincoln take from that in terms of his contacts and his, his knowledge within the game? Well, that that's absolutely it. You know, we're we're still maturing as a football club at, at the English Football League level. You know, it was not so long ago that you know we're we're you know not finishing above thirteenth in the National League. So for ourselves as a football club and, and as a growing organisation and a maturing organisation, I think Michael's age or, or be you know his early forties, the the you know the experience and, and the early ending of a playing career, you know, meant that that it actually comes with with wealth of experience and, and bags of knowledge and, and and like you say, a great phone book. So. For for us, selfishly, of course, we're going to tap into that as part of the growth of Lincoln City. Um, but it was all those elements that went into us knowing right, very clearly and with real clarity of thought that Michael was the right person for Lincoln City Football Club, both now and with where we want to be in the future. Thank you. Uh, Michael, welcome to BBC Radio Lincoln. Hello. I should say welcome back to, to Central Bank. Yeah, actually, yeah. A little spell here. Do you yeah. know much about it? No, um, although like, you know, I was aware of... Um, you know, when when there was a bit of an interest, um, it did bring a bit of a smile to my face because, you know, I, when I first met the board, I did say, "Look, I made my league debut for the Lincoln City." Uh, I remember the game. Actually, I remember that game quite clearly because I think it was a five-one defeat at Chester City, who were top of the league. I mean, Kevin Ratcliffe was the manager at the time, and I got my front tooth smashed in. 
Um, so it was a memorable day for me for all the wrong reasons. Um, I listened to an interview you did for a podcast about 18 months ago and you, and you talked about this next couple of years being pivotal on whether you made that decision to be a manager or whether mm. to be a, an assistant. Was being a manager an itch that needed to be scratched? I think so. You know, obviously leaving Oxford at the time that I did, um, you know, I suppose people were divided whether that was the right thing to do or not. Uh, there was a lot of information that I knew that nobody else knew. It was the reason why I left and for all the right reasons. Um, I had a, like I say, great time there, great relationship with the fans, with the owners, the chairman. Um, and taking the role as assistant manager at Leicester City, I had, a, I had a fantastic time. It was great to be working at that level again. There's no doubt about it. It, it could have and hopefully could have been a little bit different uh, had Craig not lost his job after eight games. Uh, but ultimately that's how it was and that's how it turned out. Um, the, the last year I've had out was that opportunity for me to reflect a little bit and not jump into the first one or two that came along. Um, you know, I took the role obviously at West Brom to do the 23s, you know, a couple of months back, but um, it, you know, it was dead simple. It was, you know, people said, why, why have you put yourself in that position, taking a 23s? I was doing that 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Um, but I enjoy being on the grass. I like working with teams, I like working with players, I like producing players. So it was a no-brainer for me. Um, but at the back of mind, I think it was pretty clear, and I think it was pretty clear to the likes of Luke and Mark Jenkins at, at West Brom that um, you know at some point I would move on. Now, I'll be straight with you, I didn't expect it to be after six or seven weeks, ultimately. Um, but you know, sometimes you've got to grasp opportunities when they come along. We've lived in this bubble for the last three years at Lincoln City. How are how is the football club seen from outside of our little bubble? Well, I, I, as I said, that's part of the reason that I'm here. You know, um, I think that the success that certainly off the pitch is noticeable, and you're aware of it a little bit more than what's going on behind it. I mean, I wasn't aware obviously of the the training facility until the last few days, and you know that's fantastic. You know, the the efforts that have been put on on the on the playing field give the football club the opportunity to to build that um, fantastic facility. Um, and I think we can improve that and you know, I like to think I can add value in terms of ways to improve that as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of them football clubs in it that, you know, even if you're not associated with it, um, you're aware of it because of the cup runs, for the success that, that's been going on. Um, and you feel that you know it, even if you, if you don't. I think it's one of them clubs that um, everyone will have an opinion on and think they know about what's going on at Lincoln City, even if they're supporting from afar. I would have said before Saturday that you're coming into a job which is a, a bit different to usual. Usually you come into a job where a manager's lost a job who's not doing very well. You mm -hmm. come into a, a job where a manager's gone higher up. How much work do you think there is that needs to be done for this squad this season? I, th I think there is a, a lot of work to be done. Um, certainly, you know, whether that be um, on the training field on day to day between now and January, whether that's adding to the squad in January and and utilising uh, the squad to the best of your ability and the budget to the best of your ability. I think Dan and Nick, if they were sat here and you were talking about League One and League One in general and the challenges that they may have as managers this year, I'd be very, very shocked and surprised if they didn't say anything different to me in terms of, like I say, it's a very, very different league to League Two. I've been in their shoes uh, when I was at Oxford, getting promoted from League Two into League One and I realised how difficult it was because it took probably half a season or so to really suck for some of the players to get used to the, 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 how, the challenge and, and how big of a challenge it was. So uh, I'm under no illusions, you know, the reality is the facts are I'm, I'm walking into a football club that have won one game in nine, you know, that's a fact and like I said before, you know, Dan and Nick would, would have been aware that, you know, they were going through a bit of a poor period themselves, um, but that's part and parcel of the process, it's part and parcel of the challenge, you know. Um, like I said to Rob before, I, I do like a challenge and, you know, for me to come here, I just see it as another great opportunity to try and do something similar as what we did at Oxford. Uh, you met the players for the first time, I think, or you've taken training for the first time this morning. What was your message to them? Um, it was almost like a little bit of clarity. You know, I think um, some of them were still a bit sore and hurting from the weekend, which you'd, which you'd expect. Um, but I think getting back to basics really I think you know I think for, for for the game first four games of the season we didn't concede a goal you know since then it's been a little bit different so 
being hard to beat, keeping clean sheets, you know, making the opposition come on to us a little bit rather than trying to force it, you know. So just real simple, simplistic stuff um, and playing for me shape and hopefully we can nick it one or two results and obviously get the feel-good factor back again. Uh, I know when we spoke to the chairman on, on Saturday, he says he's going to allow you to, to bring in an assistant manager. Mm -hmm. Do you know who that's going to be yet? Um, I've got a good idea. In fact, I've got a very good idea, but you need to give me at least 24 or 48 hours or so before I'm, I want to mention it, yeah. Uh, and do you feel you're going to bring any other staff? Or are, you, are you happy with the, the people you've got here? No, ultimately, obviously, um, you know, at this moment in time, uh, I'm going to be, like say, bringing an assistant manager in. Um, and then over a period of time, organically, you know, it's like anything. If you're going to grow and going to grow as a football club, you might want to improve um, the, your numbers in terms of your staff. But ultimately... Um, we've got a bit of a job to do over the next uh, six to eight weeks first before we start uh, looking to make too many changes. Uh, now we're known as having a, a vocal support finally, but you must have been quite surprised how vocal we were in the stands at, at 6 0 down on Saturday. Yeah, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, obviously. Um, you know, one of the things I said to the players today is about staying in games when you're not playing particularly well. You know, um, we let the game get away from us a little bit. Um, you don't have the success that the players and the club have had on the pitch over the last two or three years without letting games get away from you. And obviously we did that on Saturday as a, as a team. It's important that if you go a goal down or two goals down, stay in the game, get to the 80th minute, anything can happen. The next goal changes the momentum. So for them to stay with us as they did on Saturday, I hope you know if we ever find ourselves in a position where we're behind at home going into the last stages, they still do the same things. Um, I mean, they were doing... A, a couple of comical things that I've not seen before, but obviously I'm going to see more of uh, in terms of separating and having a pop at each other. But um, yeah, it was it was a first for me, but it was good. It was good. Um, and finally, what type of manager are you? What if you could describe yourself as a manager? Um, I've got no idea. Um, well, I'm a people's person. If if that helps, yeah. I mean, well, first and foremost. You know, I'm I'm very comfortable on the on the grass. You know, that's I'm a, I'm a coach first and foremost, and that was my background coming from a, a playing career that obviously was cut short. My first sort of a love after playing was was coaching, and I enjoyed that working at various age groups. Um, but in terms of um, managing, yeah, I'm, I like to think I'm a people's person. You know, whether um, it's one of the under 11s or a, a member of staff working in the academy or one of the senior members sat next to me. I'm the same person, I act the same way, um, and just with a bit of humility and respect, really. Uh, Jez, I believe you was one of the first people to mention Michael to, to the chair, and how, how do you two go back when you two know each other from, or how did you get to know about Michael? Well, we, we don't know each other, so the first time we had a, a meaningful conversation was the first interview. Um, just everyone you speak to in football would speak really, really highly of Michael, and when you start thinking about the profile of what we need, um, experience in League One. I think people may harshly judge him incorrectly about those first three jobs in management. I think you can look beyond that and see the job he did at Oxford. I saw that pretty much at first hand um, from another club and saw how he built that, that team. Got promoted, stabilised in League One and you could argue went to another job. You know, you don't often get opportunities to go and work with, with first team players in the Premier League. So to do that just shows what a good coach he is. But maybe it would have been really interesting to see what would have happened at Oxford and I think that's something that we might be able to see now. Um, and it wasn't just in terms of results, it was how they played. You can always tell a, how well coached the team is, I think, by how they play um, and definitely how they develop so many young players. You know, there was a huge amount of um, talent that was recruited for Oxford or came through their system um, that then went on to higher levels and, and for significant transfer fees. So, yeah, I think it, it was just the whole package and, and literally every reference, every player that every, ever played for him or anyone who ever worked with him, um, you get the same thing, would only speak highly of him. I was going to say, the last year or so that you've been at the, the football club, you've worked really hard on, on the recruitment side and, and changing the youth setup here at, at Lincoln City. Does that help with Michael's experience as well of bringing through young players? You're hoping the two will, will marry up? Yeah, I think for, for most football clubs, um, to develop your own players, um, A, for your first team, and then B, potentially to go higher and then generate income that can be reinvested is, is really important. It's got to be a really important part of anyone's business plan, but you need someone with the ability to do that. Um, we've spent a lot of time in the last 12 months trying to develop our academy um, and understanding where that's come from. You know, six years outside the Football League, losing its funding, losing a lot of players. It's a reconstruction job, really, in terms of, especially at the top end of the, the academy, I um, mean, recruiting scholars. 
but you need the right environment for those players to go into and the right coaching and someone with the ability to develop players as the first team manager. So, you know, as well as winning football matches, that was a big attraction. The job that Michael did at Oxford and his background in developing young players is really important. Lovely, thank you. Uh, Mark from Lincoln Track. Oh, hi, Michael. Michael. Um, what can we expect from the Michael Atherton team? How do you like to set up? How do you like to play? Um, well, it depends. I think, first and foremost, you're not going to see uh, the type of style and probably uh, way that I finished with my time at Oxford because if you look at the probably first six months of my time at Oxford to the last six months, it was very, very different. Um, so I think, first and foremost, you've got to take on the challenge ahead. Of, you know, and like I said, and I'll repeat it, you know, we, we find ourselves with one winning nine, so that needs to be addressed. And the first thing is we need to be hard to beat. Um, so I think initially, uh, making sure we, we do the basics really, really well. But I think progressing and when the players become comfortable with me, the style and trust, um, the type of football I want to sort of bring to the football club. Um, I'd like to think you see a, an expansive, progressive side that um, you know clearly want to play forward, want to make opportunities um, and have key players in key areas of the field. Do you think you've got the players to, to do that at this, at this stage? Is it going to take a few months, do you think? Well, it will take a few months and even if I had the players, like I said, to play that type of style of football, it certainly won't happen in the next couple of months or so. I think, I think there's almost a realisation of, of everybody that we're playing at a different level now. Obviously, um, to do so well and get promoted last year um, into this level, um, you've only got to look at the, the next five or six games that are coming up and the size of the clubs uh, and the quality of the players in there uh, to realise that us as a club, us as a team, we will grow over the season. Um, but ultimately, you know, the first and foremost is, is making sure, getting back to keeping clean sheets, making sure we're hard to beat, and then we'll flourish over the season when there's a bit of belief in the camp. Yeah, what do you make? What do you make of the first month you've got? I mean, Blackpool on Friday, then Man United on the twenty one. Mm. It's a, and a Sunderland after that very interesting start for you. Yeah, it is, and obviously, you know, Peterborough and Portsmouth and Shrewsbury to follow. You know, it's one of them where um, it's a very, very difficult start. But if anything, it's all, it'll almost give us a realization where we are as well. And I think that'll be important for the players to test themselves against the better sides in the division um, to see where we're at as, as a club. Um, and I, I always feel that performance levels, and I can speak from experience, when you play the the better or the so-called better and stronger sides in the division. Uh, your perform performance levels rise anyway, um, and it'll be interesting to see how we compete and how we can cope with that. So, at what point did you decide that Lincoln City was the club for you? Did, did you have an inkling, perhaps, when Danny and Nicky left, that you thought possibly anything? Or no, not at all. If I'm being honest, no. Um, I think obviously um, after the first meeting I had with with, with the board, um, very very quickly, you know, I had a realization that I felt I could work with them. Um, like I say, I'm a people person and. A, you know, I get a, a reasonable feel whether I can work with people. Um, at some, I've had to learn uh, the hard way, you know, um, from previous. Um, but certainly going back to, you know, I don't want to talk about too much because I'm here now, but that's something that I got right at Oxford United. You know, I knew that I could work with Mark Ashton at the time and Daryl Eels, who was a chief exec and the chairman. Uh, and I knew that I had a feel that there would be a good relationship and that's what I get with obviously Jez and Liam and obviously Clive and the rest of the board. How much did your playing career shape your approach to management? Um, I was a little bit different as a player than as manager. Um, yeah, you, well, I was a bit, bit angry and aggressive <laughs> and, yeah, as, a, as a player, yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was a little bit different as a player. I was, you know, it was... Um, no old bad situation, I suppose, but I think um, growing up um, as a young kid at Man United, you get shaped a little bit off the field in terms of discipline and, and um, like I say, the, the respectful side of it and the humility side of it. You know, um, It possibly shaped me in some ways, what it did do. Um, probably one of, my, one of my biggest strengths now, it used to be one of my biggest weaknesses, and that was my patience. Obviously, when you have your career cut short as I did through medical ne negligence um, and lose 10 years of career, you can get pretty much, it becomes pretty much hard, uh, on top of you. And I went through a couple of, maybe 18 months or so where it was tough, you know, it was, I had a few dark spells. 
Um, but to come out of that um, and get the opportunity like I did at West Brom at the time was massive for me. And it allowed me to uh, use the phrase, do my time in the trenches. So I was able to go and take younger age groups, 14, 15, 16s, before going on to like the reserves, which is now the 23s. Uh, then obviously going into the men's football with the first team. So I had an opportunity to, as a coach, make lots of mistakes and not really anyone notice it. Um, whereas now, um, you know, you're in the firing line. So if you make a poor decision, whether it's, um, you know, your shape, whether it's a substitution, you know, you, you get you have to ask, answer the questions, and um, I'd like to think I'm you know much more experienced now to deal with that, um, having gone through what I did go through. It did form a, a good a connection with the fans. I read that was something you, you did quite well at, at, at that position. Absolutely, yeah. You know, they're they're going to play a massive part, and obviously, hopefully, what will be a successful three and a half years and, and beyond. Hopefully, um, you know, I know they've had a massive part to play in the success over the last three years, so. That's something that you know naturally we'll be looking to do. Um, they're going to want to have something to shout about, so we have to you know entertain them in a way and and make sure that um, you know we're creating chances and, and, and getting goal scoring opportunities. Very different to obviously what we've seen on on Saturday. Uh, get them off their seats, get them excited, and if that's the case, and then I'm sure obviously we'll keep they'll keep continuing to come back and keep backing us. Yes, thanks, Mark. Richard. Um, Michael at uh, uh, Richard Media Links. Um, the chairman mentioned that he thought your appointment was a good fit with the players that Danny and Nick brought in over the summer and also the star they've been trying to play so far this season. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I think um, I think if one of the things that if you as, as an outsider, if people spoke about uh, Lincoln coming through, obviously the conference to, to lead to. Um, you know, a lot of people would use the word direct, but I think, like I say, once I've seen the stats and bits from the games, you can definitely see that um, there's a clear change in thought and mentality of how the game's played and how the team wants to wants to play. Um, you've only got to look at the possession stats and, and the, the amount of passes that the team have done in, in, in some of the games so far this year, whereas in previous seasons it might have been very, very different. So. And I and I completely understand the thought, press, thought process behind that because I've mentioned it two or three times already. You know, there's one thing being able to uh, play a certain style in League Two, but you're probably not going to have the same success in League One because there's some big clubs, as we know, in this division now, um, and you have to be a little bit cuter, a little bit smarter, um, and have players who who can be clever and do do things a little bit differently. I can remember the day Lincoln had their great day at Burnley. I can remember watching Match of the Day last night and watching your Oxford team. I thought Middlesbrough very close um, that night as mm. well. And cup football is obviously something that you take very seriously as a manager as well. Yes, yeah. Um, I just think f for any teams in the, in the lower leagues, so to speak, uh, whether that's League Two, League One, Conference, um, the imagination of a cup run, I think, just brings a football club together anyway. Uh, and the excitement that I'm sure that was around Lincoln at the time, you know, playing the likes of Arsenal and Burnley and these teams in the cup run. Um, that was important for us at Oxford because all of a sudden we were putting back bums on seats and filling the stadium and, and, and that's key. Um, but it's good for continuity as well. Like, you know, it's, um, if you ask players, would they prefer to play or train? They'll tell you all day long they prefer to play. And my argument back to the players at Oxford all the time, if that's the case and you want to do less training, keep winning games of football and keep getting on cup runs. And um, we were lucky for, like I say, for three years to go on some really good cup runs in the FA Cup. And obviously we didn't have this, quite the success as what Lincoln had as a club in the uh, EFL Trophy, getting there twice and missing out twice. But it was still great, two great occasions. I think there was 74,000 for the... The Coventry game and sixty odd thousand for the Barnsley game. So, um, why wouldn't you want to, you know, relive them, uh, relive them memories? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Simon from BBC Liverpool. Hi, Sam. Um, Michael, uh, you alluded to Mark there about some dark days in your career, and I read an article about uh, you where you described how your knee exploded after mm. a Newcastle under twenty three game that you mm. played against them. Yeah. And also how you dealt with losing some jobs. You went and did a. Masters in sports management, was it? Yeah, yeah. 
And can you explain the process of how you dealt with some dark and disappointing moments in your career and how it shaped you into being the manager you are now? Yeah, I think um, to have your career taken away from you at any time is obviously going to be disappointing. Um, but when you find yourself at a, at a Premier League club, um, you know, and you know, you leave a club like Manchester United as I did as a kid, and there's only one way down at that time from Man United. You know, it's just downwards. So to try and fight my way back up as I did with West Brom, to then have to sort of give ten years up, uh, two years of rehab, three years, uh, sorry, three operations, reconstructions of the knee. Um, it takes its toll on you, um, and there was definitely a period where. Um, I really struggle with it. There's no hiding place, you know, and especially when, you know, today, certainly over the last couple of years, um, how um, the whole mental health and the mental health issues has, has come to the fore. Um, you can relate to it. I can relate to it because I was probably too proud at the time to say anything that I was struggling and um, you try and find something uh, to... Um, cope with that and I, 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 there was two things that I had to, to cope with it one I was really lucky that the club gave me an opportunity to, to stay in and do the coaching side of stuff that was West Brom Shelby. West Brom yeah and um, and then the other one was um, the gym um, so no joking apart it was it was it was my get away from everybody and um, you know it, the amount I took away my, my lower body in terms of what I could physically do at the time but you know I just literally focused on being as strong and as tough as I possibly can, like for a few years, and to be fair, he got he got to the point where actually, you know, this is ridiculous. I need to stop this. Um, but it certainly helped me in that period. Um, and I think the reason behind doing the masters in sport directorship um, that there's quite a few things really. I think first and foremost, one of the couple of the mistakes I made in my early part of my career at Portsmouth. Um, Blackpool and uh, Blackburn is I had to improve my understanding and relationship between myself and managing upwards and obviously with the senior members of staff, the chief execs, the chairmen, the owners and I wanted to get a little bit of an insight in how they think and how they work. Um, so when the opportunity come along, I didn't think they'd take me on it initially but I went for the interview. I wasn't particularly academic but um, I loved learning. Uh, I like being tested, I like being out of my comfort zone. Um, I had done an HND previously when I was playing in sports science, so I did a little bit from leaving school. But at school, I, yeah, I was a nightmare at school, and I, you know, I freely admit that. You know, I just like I say, um, but going on that course, it was so far out of my comfort zone. I can't tell you. You know, so having to read again, having to read abstracts, and getting a grips with a you know, a, a, a dissertation and stuff like that was, was difficult. Um, but over the, the three years or so, um, a few sleepless nights, um, long hours, and, you know, ironically, I was actually managing a football club at the time. I was, you know, managing Oxford. So to get through that and do that, um, the achievement of when I, when I passed it was, was magnificent, really. But what it did do, it opened my eyes. You know, Liam touched on it there. It opened my eyes to the business side of a football club. Uh, and the governance going around, you know, how you put a board together and budgets and all this type of stuff. So um, they can't pull a wool over my eyes. Because Nicky and Danny transcended Lincoln City. And what I mean by that is if you went to the high street, people would always know who they were and what they were doing, whether or not they came to Lincoln City. And that marked a big change in three years at this football club. So I just wonder now, with them out of the way, how you look to continue that uh, that work, that foundation, if you will. Sure, I think um, a lot of what you saw with Dan and Nick, it was just built on our everyday behaviours and that humility and the way that we engaged. And that's when the cameras are on and when the cameras are off. And I think, um, you know, when, you know, as you've heard Michael speak so articulately about, you know, his experiences wider in football, I think that's why, you know, we, we've got great confidence that, that, you know, Michael's the right person to take us going forward through all parts of the football club, not, not just the football department. Um, and you're right to recognise that. And of course, you know, it's something that, that we see as a challenge right now. 
But you, you know, you just have to look at the fans that were in the ground on on Saturday and and the result going against us and the way they reacted to that. And I think that's built, you know, from from you know we we have a bit of you know reserves in the bank from from those times and through that that hard work that we've we've put in the hard years that we've we've put in throughout the you know the last three and a half years and and probably you know beyond that. So you know, of course, we recognise it. We we see the challenges, but the good work that the you know the community team do. And the good work that you know all parts of the football club do is you know doesn't go unmissed, and and just because two people have, have left the football club doesn't mean there's anything to, to change there. So you know for us it's very much business as usual, um, and, and we're committed, and, and you know our, our challenges and our aspirations won't, won't change as such. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Harry. Michael, uh, Tom Corcoran, Links FM. Um, how long do you think it will be before Lincoln fans start writing chants about you as they did Daddy Cowley? Oh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, obviously, um, again, I think that's going to be the relationship that I need to build with them. And the only way I can do that is, one, trying to win games, which is obviously important. Um, but even and then times when you're not winning games, if they can see a team that reflects them a little bit, you know, hardworking, humble, um, honest, I'm sure that, like I say, it won't be too long, hopefully, uh, before they recognise that, you know, hopefully we've got a side that uh, are more than capable of competing at this level. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, fellas. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen.